Hello there. So I use Veeam for all of my uh, development and that includes the embedded C development. Um, and it works for me very well with the uh, help of the C, C++ language server. However, there is a um, ID provided uh, from ST uh, that gives you this great code generation um, features. So basically, you can just um, in a in a graphical way you can select your the, the peripherals that you you wish to use, configure them, and it will uh, generate um, for you all of the initialization code that you will need for it. And it's great, especially in the beginning of the project when you just like mess around with the settings and uh, try out different peripherals and, and, and stuff like that. However, the problem with, uh, with it is that you either then need to um, copy the files or you need to shift around the files so that basically you can utilize the C's, uh, CCLS, the language server, um, in your Vim. So then you either develop in the, uh, in the tube ID, which is, so well, some people probably like it. Um, however, I, I, I found a way that you can configure the uh, STM project within the cube ID, uh, where you can basically share the code between the, the Vim uh, and the IDE, and you can qu quickly jump between the two e editors if needs be. Um, and that works quite well uh, for me. So let me just show you how I configure the STM cube. So first we need a tool called uh, CompileDB uh, and we can install it uh, from uh, pip. Uh, it's available in there, so just run this command, it will install it on your system and then make sure uh, that the CompileDB is, is in your path. We can now uh, jump in and uh, start creating our project. So nothing differs here, here from uh, from the usual stuff that you would uh, create uh, created. Um, we'll just create some basic. Um, code and there it is. That's that's the nice part part uh, uh, about this code generation here. So if we were to jump in uh, directly into this. Um, um, into this project with our Vim, we wouldn't really um, get uh, much in terms of uh, what Vim and the uh, CCLS can uh, can offer us. Um, so basically, any code completion and functionality simply would just uh, wouldn't work. And as you can see, if the server would start throwing some errors because there is no uh, way for it to know where our header files are located and, and, and stuff like that. So now we just need to make a couple of uh, changes to our project. So first of all, let's build it first. That will generate our uh, uh, debug folder with the, the make file. So basically that make file is generated by the stm 32 cube um, based on um, all of our project settings um, sorry, it's actually here so basically based, based on all of our project settings uh, that, that will generate the, the make file that it's used to build uh, the entire project and generate our binaries or elf files um, so what we want to do is go, go to the properties uh, C++ build Builder settings. We make sure that the builder type is uh, external builder. We untick the default builder command because we will provide our own based on the compiled DB uh, that we just installed. Um, so we will specify the output file, which is the uh, compile commands 
uh, to JSON and we want to place it in the root directory. At least that's where I like to put it. Compile command JSON. Um, to JSON, we pro uh, provide the command to the main file and we provide the, the location of the, uh, of the make file, which is in our uh, debug folder. So basically our workspace location. Uh, followed by colon and the, the name of our project. And in the folder, the book. And then the usual uh, eight jobs. We apply. We apply and close, and then once we generate the, or build the the project, the compile command the JSON should appear in the root of our directory, uh, which is going to contain all of the informations about the uh, the build process, uh, and it has this, uh, this syntax uh, that basically is read by the CCLS the C language server. So if you, with this uh, file uh, appearing in the um, in the root of our project, if we go to uh, uh, to our project and we start working on it with Vim, you will notice that there's no more error and that all of a sudden Vim is able to provide us with a very very helpful list of all the available functions and auto suggestions and, and stuff like that uh, and all of this is taken essentially from the compile commands uh, file with the nice auto suggestions and code completions and, and stuff like that and then basically you can easily start developing your code you know, with Vim uh, oh, Obviously, you need to still respect the the comments and the user tags where you can put the code. Otherwise, if you were to go back to your um, uh, STM cube uh, and you were to generate the code, uh, your changes would be overwritten, which is which is a bad thing <laughs> usually. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the. This is how you want to set it up. So then you can easily swap between the two development environments and just work with. Me. In, with your usual stuff in Vim, we have with access to all of your Vim plugins and whatever uh, features you have. Uh, if you don't like the the compile commands uh, location, you can place it wherever you want in your command. But then you have to make sure that the uh, C language server knows uh, how to find it. And then I think the on or at least the one way that I know how to do this is to just to create. Um, uh, is to create the .cclfs file in the root of your directory and in here you need to tell um, cclfs where to look for uh, compiled commands um, so if you were to place it in let's say in the debug folder or something like that you just add book in here and that's where CCLS will look for the compile commands to JSON uh, file um, but like I said I usually like to keep it in here okay and I hope that this was actually helpful to uh, somebody so but that's it for today uh, bye bye